and welcome to Meldon Law Talk, a service of Meldon Law, a Gainesville-based hometown law firm with its primary office in Gainesville and also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today is Friday, October 30th, 2020, the first episode of Meldon Law Talk. And I am very happy to be joined by the president, CEO, and founder of Meldon Law, Jeffrey Meldon. How are you doing, Jeffrey? Great, Chris. How you doing? Uh, we're all excited about a great Gator game tomorrow. It's it's incredible because we haven't had football for two weeks. It's such a weird you know time with all that's going on with the pandemic. But finally, we've got people coming into town today. It'll be a huge weekend, Missouri today, and of course the big one a week from now, Florida, Georgia. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's really great. I spent the weekend uh, watching some football. And, uh, you know, there's, it's exciting that sports are back. I never really realized how big a part of our lives it was to be able oh, to... Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's such an important part of our cultural fabric. It's really something that unites everybody, you know, with, with all that's going on in the world today. One thing we can pretty much agree on is the importance of sports in our culture. But I want to take a second to introduce somebody else, a good friend and now a colleague, Richard Perlini. Hi. He was the newest face at Melvin Law. Richard has been an attorney for many years, tremendously experienced, and is now joining the team at Melda Law. Welcome and, to the team, Richard. Well, thanks very much. It's uh, wonderful to be back. I'm I'm a Gator Nation member. I graduated University of Florida. I lived up here, owned property, and now I'm back. Uh, I worked with Jeffrey Melden in 1975 when That's I was just a, a law student, and Jeffrey gave me a chance to go in and work with him and try cases and enjoy and learn had a practice, and it was an honor to to be a member. And now here I am, full circle, living forty five years area. later, back in Gate. Well, back in North Central Florida, anyway. Yeah, back in Ocala, and then up here in uh, Gainesville, and it's awesome. I I really missed that whole flavor of the college town, and just that the awesomeness of being, you know, close to the Gator Nation again. Well, it's, it's got to be a huge change for you because something I wanted to ask you is you, of course, practiced in South Florida for a long time, but now you're coming up to Ocala, Marion County, and Alachua County and all the surrounding areas. It's got to be a huge difference. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's such an amazing difference to see the people up here. I'm reminded how wonderful. I was at a stop sign and none of us went and everybody waved everybody on in, in such a collegial, uh, friendly nature. And it's so awesome to be back up here again. <laughs> they don't just add in South Florida? Mm, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you uh, tell us how you made the uh, transformation to move from uh, South Florida uh, up here to Marion County and Alachua County? I think my wife had a, a great deal to do with it. My wife rescues horses, rescues dogs. Cats, tortoises, uh, you name the animal and she rescues. So we went on to, we went up here to buy some land so that we could rescue more animals and uh, found a beautiful home here in Ocala. And that's how I kind of came up back up here. And oh, just awesome. Just, I, I Are love you sure it. the golf courses didn't have anything to do with it? Well, perhaps a little bit, you know. You have Golden Ocala, and you have Ocala Country Club, and you have the, the beautiful, incredible golf course right here at the university. Sure. And I've always wanted to play it. I have yet to play that course, and I'm so looking forward to playing there. Probably another story for another day, but it's really pretty incredible, all the pro golfers that have come out of uh, University of Florida. I remember Andy North and so many others that uh, have emanated from here, and really they, they got their chops playing right on that course. The amount of, of athletics and the growth of the Florida athletic program and how many athletes, pro athletes, uh, that have come through this entire program, golfers and, and volleyball players, lacrosse players. It's really pretty amazing. Swimmers. I mean, great swimmers, well, too. Uh, it's well, I know, Richard, you've been an athlete your whole life. Tell us a little bit about some of your athletic uh, endeavors. Well, I... Played a little bit of a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. I played some semi-pro football, college football, 
semi-pro baseball, AAU basketball. I played for the University of Florida lacrosse club team when I was going That's to school. That's brutal. Now, that's impressive. <laughs> All the rest was impressive, but that yes. was really impressive. Uh, Organized mayhem when my son played it. Uh, yes, it's you, you're allowed to beat people with sticks. It's kind of a fun game. <laughs> and when you consider the history of lacrosse, how the Indians would decide in a very civil matter all of their disputes with uh, both tribes being on one side of the field from the other, uh, and then the winner would would uh, win whatever they were fighting over, usually territory or animals or something like that. And it's quite an amazing sport. I know professionally, you, you've done a lot of different things, you've told me, but the focus, of course, is that you are a trial attorney. You're a guy who loves to go to court, you love to fight these things out, beat up on the insurance companies. Why not share a few thoughts about your, your work as a, what we call a plaintiff's lawyer? One of the things that we all have to remember, it's, it's really hard for someone, when they've been in an accident, to go through, first of all, the pain and suffering from the injury. The, of how it affects your lifestyle, your income, even your home. Um, it, when you're in a ton of pain, it affects your relationships with everyone around you, especially the people that are closest to you. And to convey that to someone so that they understand how this accident has affected your life uh, is one of the goals that I've always had. And I think jurors are, are very intelligent and people understand and empathize with the, what you have to go through when someone else hurts you. And, and, you know, the American system says, you know, you don't hit back. You don't, you do it the right way. The right way is you go to court and six people will, will help you to a decision, to fairness, uh, and, and to a right uh, outcome for covering your pain, your suffering, your, your loss of enjoyment of life, your medical bills, your loss of income, your loss of future income, how arthritis affects you in the future. There's so many components. And, and it's really an honor to represent people and, and have the opportunity to tell jurors about this. Richard, how many times do you think you've gone to uh, court on behalf of plaintiffs? I've done about 200 jury trials uh, I have represented thousands, literally, uh, of injured people. Not every case goes to trial. In fact, one of the most important factors and one of the reasons that I really wanted to come back and join Melden Law is the preparation. The more we are prepared to go to court, the less chances we are of actually having to go through a trial. So, and I've watched and I've now been here a few weeks and watched the phenomenal preparation that Melden Law puts into their cases. We haven't been able to go to trial yet because of COVID, of course, mm -hmm. and courts are shut down. But uh, the impressive results that Melden Law has gotten uh, just drew me to coming back and, and, work, and it's such an honor to work with you again. Well, it's really a lot of fun because we take uh, our cases seriously. Um, our clients uh, rely on us to do the very best job we can, but we also have a good time helping people. Yeah, it, you know, the, it's, there's a real collegial atmosphere within the office itself. And you see, I'm sitting here today in a, <laughs> in a golf shirt, and, um, and it's just wonderful. And, and to see how you really care about all of your clients uh, it really has impressed me so much in the first two weeks that I've been back. So, Jeffrey, I know one thing, just to kind of amplify what Richard's talking about, I know something you have prided yourself on, and it's been really a mantra for the firm, is that we, we build these cases up literally from the day they walk in the door. We start compiling medical information. We start with the investigation immediately. And we certainly try to work these cases out. In most cases, we're able to successfully negotiate with an insurance company. What's been your thought on, well, let me ask it a different way. Why have we been so successful? It seems like of all the lawyers I've known and worked with in the past, you have such a great track record of getting pre-litigation settlements. What do you think it is that makes that happen? Well, I think it has to do with preparation and also investing in the talent that's necessary to get a good result. It's just like um, a football game. 
if you prepare to succeed, the chance of succeeding is much greater. And um, in our law firm, we bring in the top uh, experts, the best doctors, and the folks that the insurance companies respect so that when we present the case to the insurance company, they know that in the event the case were to go to trial, that we would more than likely win and get a really good result for our client. And they go, okay, Jeffrey, we don't really need to um, litigate this case because you brought in all these top-notch experts and this is the information that we would normally get uh, during a, a lawsuit. So what, what we talk about is before a lawsuit is filed, that's called pre-suit, and mm -hmm. then after a lawsuit's filed. And one of our goals is to get maximum value for the client in as short a period of time as possible. Why is that important? Believe me, uh, if a client gets a huge verdict at a trial, it may be a three to five oh, year yeah. process. You've got okay. appeals, motions for rehearing, all sorts of post-trial things that go on. Not only that, uh, the fee is higher. That's right. The attorney fee is higher, and the costs to take a, tr a case to trial are uh, huge. So in the event that you can get a really good settlement for the client, number one, they don't have the aggravation of having three or four. They know they're going to be paid. If you have a negotiated settlement, there's a guarantee they will get paid. Correct. And they also really appreciate the fact that uh, they're able to move forward with their lives. Sure. A lot of times, uh, the best uh, day for a client is when they've settled their case and they can move forward with their lives, get the medical treatment that they need, uh, stop worrying about what's going to happen with their case. So we really try to do that. On the other hand, if the insurance co company doesn't want to play ball, then we have to file the lawsuit sure. and, uh, and take the alternative step of uh, moving the, the, the case forward and eventually to a jury. So one thing I'm taking from what you said, though, a moment ago is that the insurance companies are motivated, too, to settle these cases prior to trial. It's in their better interest, right? They save money. It gets it off their plate. They move forward. Yeah. So they have attorney fees. They have costs. Uh, what they want to do, though, is to fully and fairly evaluate the case because there's nobody that has more information than the insurance company. That's the truth. <laughs> uh, there's nobody that has more money than the insurance company. And it's uh, amazing that even during COVID and all these other times, the insurance companies keep collecting premiums. So they're probably stocked with money now more than they have in years and years and years. And they really um, are uh, incentivized to try to uh, settle cases if they can. On the other hand, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage because we can't go into the courtroom and try the case right sure. now. Although um, in Marion County and Latra County, they are opening up the courtrooms and we will have that uh, stick. Uh, in our favor very shortly. I know one thing that's important. I'm going to toss this to both of you. It sounds so obvious and basic, but the client has to tell us the truth. They have to be open, forthright about their whole medical history, and we don't play hide the ball with that. When we send these demands out, we say to the insurance company up front, look, we know this person had some pre-existing issues. We know he or she had some degenerative arthritis, whatever the case may be. That's how we build credibility, but we have to show them everything. And the client has to be honest, right? That yeah. sounds so obvious. So anyway, if you bring up a good point, I wrote a book called uh, Seven Mistakes That Can Wreck Your Florida Accident Case. And in it, I point out uh, what to do and what not to do. And uh, right up front, we always tell people, be honest with your doctor. Make sure that you don't try to hide things under the rug that you have to be honest with your lawyer. No matter what the facts are, we sure. can deal with mm -hmm. the facts, but if you get caught lying, <laughs> it's gonna blow up your case, the jury's not gonna like it, <laughs> the insurance company's not gonna like it, and what we try to do is show all of the pre-existing conditions, those things that happened before the crash, so that we can then explain what's a new injury, and what's an injury that may have pre-existed a crash, 
but right. it was made worse recently. And that, that is an element of recovery, correct, Richard? A aggravation of pre-existing conditions are very frequent, especially in older folks. Now, younger folks don't usually have that as much, but certainly in older situation, older folks' situation, yes. And a lot of people have gone to the doctor uh, for palliative or just care treatment. And sure. it's important for us to know this. And as Jeffrey pointed out, uh, you know, there's so many things that we need to be careful with. I always recommend turning off Facebook and, and all the other social media. <laughs> Believe uh, me, they'll research it and they'll find out if you're lying. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and jurors, jurors are smart. They, they know when clients and they know when defendants are also not telling the truth about sometimes sure. how an accident happens sure. and the defendant comes up with a story that's not accurate and it's not truthful and the jurors know this they can see right through that and they know that if we are there trying a case and we are in court we're really not going after the individual they're there 99 times out of 100, there's an insurance policy Absolutely. involved. So it's very important for everybody that's on a jury to understand that. We're really not asking the individual. That's why we buy insurance. Uh, that's why we have insurance and any number of types of insurance from life insurance and auto and health. But if we're in court 99 times out of 100, uh, there is sure. sufficient uh, auto insurance. You are watching. Melden Law Talk, a service of Melden Law, Gainesville-based law firm, but also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is our first podcast. This is today, the 30th day of October, 2020. It's Friday, huge football game tomorrow against Missouri. We'll be right back. The Melden Law Firm from the beginning has been built on giving back to the community. I enjoy coming to work as much today as I did in 1971 when I opened my practice. I don't look at this as a job, I look at it as serving other people. While we're alive, what better feeling can you achieve than knowing that you've helped other people and thereby you enrich your own life? Being a client in Melden Law was special because I felt like I was really being listened to and I felt welcome by the entire staff. If I were in a situation where I needed legal advice and help, I would absolutely reach out to Jeffrey because his reputation alone speaks for itself. But on a personal level, I know that he would take care of me and help me solve those problems and I would feel safe with him. Hello and welcome back to Melden Law Talk, a service of Melden Law, your North Central Florida-based law firm, but also with offices in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Ocala, Florida. And just to say a couple of words about those other offices. These are fully staffed offices, Jeffrey. These are not satellite offices. We've got attorneys, we've got staff. The South Florida office in particular is serving the entire South Florida area, including Miami-Dade County, going all the way up to West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County. We really have the whole state covered, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. And we take cases all over the state. And we have for years and years. But now, uh, since my son, Kerry, went down to South mm -hmm. Florida and uh, uh, opened up our uh, new office down there uh, about a year and a half, two years sure. ago, uh, we really enjoy uh, you know, meeting and serving our friends down in South Florida. I know you started the Gainesville office way back in the early 70s. We literally are on our sixth decade of operation, but uh, you've been in Ocala for quite a long time. Richard, that's where you're going to be hanging your hat primarily, but really trying cases everywhere. So uh, really, we truly are a statewide firm. Primary office in Gainesville, but we handle cases all over the state. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, where a, law a lawyer is located uh, we take cases all over the state of Florida. In fact, we've had people from Florida come to us and say, uh, Jeffrey, you represented me in the past, and I was sure. in a crash up in uh, Georgia or in Ohio, and we associate with uh, law firms out, out of the state and uh, help folks no matter where they were um, injured. So for those of you who are watching rather than listening, you may notice that uh, Jeffrey is wearing a University of Florida football jersey, 
and we've got a helmet here. So th there's a reason for this. Why don't you tell our viewers and listeners what this is all about? Well, we're really honored that the University of Florida has uh, uh, asked Melden Law to partner up with them in supporting all of the University of Florida athletic programs. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the University of Florida is consistently a top five program in the United States for their entire athletic program. And not only is Melden Law going to be the only official law firm sponsor of the Florida Gators, how we are also going to be partnering up with them and try to do all kind of really good charity events for the community. So what this means is that when people start going to football games and start going to basketball games at the O'Connell Center, and it's not just the major sports, it's it's everything. It's baseball at the beautiful new huge... Wow, uh, isn't that amazing? That, that baseball, have you seen that yet, the new that, baseball stadium? I was there the other day. It's, it's incredible, and you realize how great the Florida baseball program is. Oh, it's and, amazing. And when I came back and I started to realize, I mean, the Lady Gators, they're awesome in so many sports, gymnastics and tennis, uh, the men's swimming and, and that. This is an unbelievable sports program. I think the science. Sure. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and the facilities here are uh, top notch and, and we're constantly uh, improving. I know the football uh, stadium uh, has gone through a lot of improvements, but now all of the practice facilities and sure. the offices. This is going to be like top notch and the, the Gators are going to another level. So with this sponsorship, this partnership you're telling us about, what this means is you're going to see the name Melvin Law pretty much everywhere. You'll see it at the football stadium. You'll see it at the O'Connell Center. You'll see it at the baseball stadium. Say a little bit to our listeners and viewers about that. Well, so Melvin Law has um, been in Gainesville, Florida since 1971. And we really value everything that uh, being part of the Gator Nation uh, has given to us, to my family. My son, Kerry, was born in 1978, so he's 42 years old. And we should and mention, he, he was a pretty darn good athlete in his own right. Uh, he ended up, he didn't play for the Gators, but he, went, he had a full scholarship. Yeah, so Kerry was the um, uh, Gainesville son, uh, tennis player of the year, two years in a row, his uh, junior and senior year. And then played uh, Division One tennis at, at William and Mary. Uh, after that, and uh, when he was at uh, Gainesville High School in 1996, he won a state championship playing number one singles and doubles. So uh, we were a, you know, a huge uh, sports fan. And as a matter of fact, Chris, that led us into sponsoring our Melden Law Scholar Athlete of the Week program in 1997 because Kerry was given a, uh, a TV appearance on uh, TV 20 for uh, roughly two minutes and that was it. And I okay. think I have a VHS <laughs> tape at home of him being on TV 20 saying, okay, Kerry Belden, you know, scholar athlete of the week and sure. all of that. And then I said, well, why don't we really take off on this and enhance it? So we sure. started giving away scholarships um, every week to uh, half male, half female, to a scholar athlete. We gave them a plaque plus a scholarship uh, award. And then at the end of the year, we had this great banquet, sure. which now is at the Hilton Hotel. And sadly, we couldn't do it this year because couldn't. of the pandemic. However, we're, we're coming <laughs> back strong. Uh, but uh, we have a huge banquet, and each individual weekly winner for the Melvin Law Scholar Athlete Program is then given their plaque, uh, their scholarship, and in front of the whole crowd, sure. which includes a couple hundred people, including all the families and the coaches. We honor each of our great scholar athletes. And then at the end of the program, we select our Scholar Athlete of the Year, mm -hmm. uh, give them an additional $1,000 scholarship and a big glass trophy and we've had some illustrious winners of this uh, Melden Law And I think the key thing is that it's not just achievements on the on the playing field. You've got to have the scholastic achievements as well. It's like the term says, scholar-athlete. We're looking for the well-rounded individual who is 
doing as equally a great of job in the classroom as they are on, on the playing field, right? Yeah, and we've had, you know, some really incredible uh, winners of our scholar-athlete program. You know, C.J. Spiller, oh, uh, who wow. played uh, with the Buffalo Bills, uh, mm-hmm. and Freddie Swain, who's out there with uh, Seattle. Now. Right, you know, Freddie, uh, I just, I, I joined Melvin Law four years ago, and we've been watching Freddie, you know, in his evolution as a player, you know, and he had the outstanding season last year, and now he's with the Seahawks. He's doing great. He's catching touchdown passes. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a Melden Loft Scholar yeah. Athlete of the Year. Yeah, and we've had um, a really illustrious uh, group of tremendous. Sure a- Andrew Miller uh, who, uh, was a great pitcher with the Yankees and Cleveland and uh, Boston, and he, he really uh, did great. And he's a local uh, hometown hero. And we've had a lot of our uh, John Grantley from Ocala was a Melvin Law Scholar yeah, athlete. Skater here. royalty there. <laughs> so, so anyhow, and, and uh, so anyhow, it's been you know really um, pretty cool uh, being able to sponsor this program. We're in what our twenty fourth year now, I sure. think, of sponsoring scholar athletes. But that I think brings me back to the partnership with the University of Florida. I think uh, the University of Florida recognized that Melden Law for over two decades has been uh, sponsoring and trying to highlight uh, great athlete, uh, the great high school athletes in our area, and that uh, we wanted to uh, build on that. So when the Gators came to us and said, would we like you to be our partner uh, and work as a uh, uh, the official partner of the Florida Gators. That's right. I said we're and, and exclusive <laughs> and official. I, That's but, right. But I I put my helmet on and I said I'm ready. Uh-oh, I'm here so we go. Up, and, uh, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Here we go, Gators. It's half Jeffrey back left, half back right. <laughs> Jeffrey That's goes right. around the end for twelve yards. <laughs> so uh, we're really excited about this partnership. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I one of the greatest things that I think is going to come from it is. We're going to get um, a bunch of tickets every year, and uh, we're going to be able to include charities, giveaways, bring bring, uh, young kids to Gator football games, uh, get them on the field, get them on the court, get them all over. And, you know, I saw uh, an interview the other day when uh, uh, somebody was talking about, uh, you know who it was? It was Urban Meyer. He was talking about as a kid. He got to touch an Ohio State Buckeye um, jersey, and it affect, and it affected him, you know, for the rest of his life. And I remember hearing that when Urban Meyer first became the University of Florida head coach, he got a congratulatory letter from Chris Collinsworth. And the first thing he did was call him and say, wow, you were such a hero of mine and my father's <laughs> in Ohio. We thought you were the greatest. So I want to ask you something, Richard. Um, certainly, you've, you've spent many years in South Florida, but in fact... Gator Nation, Gator Athletics, they're just as popular in South Florida as they are everywhere, right? I think people would realize how many, or people should realize, how many Gators there are in South Florida. Uh, the sports channels down there don't talk enough about Gator Nation, to me, for my liking, <laughs> and for the liking of so many, many of my friends. Well, I used to listen to WIOD and WQAM. Yeah, you're right. It was all Dolphins and Hurricanes, yeah. but not so much anymore. I think we've got a strong presence. It, it, it's an incredibly strong presence. When we were down there, you mm-hmm. see Florida win the national championship in football. You saw a great basketball tournament down there a few years ago sure. when we were on our way to the national championship. And it's just amazing. Um, and it's it's great to see really how many, how strong the Gator Nation is in South Florida. So you are watching and listening to Melden Law Talk, a service of Melden Law, a law firm with its primary office in Gainesville and also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale. Our primary practice areas are personal injury law and criminal defense law. Take a look at our website. I haven't pitched that yet. www.meldenlaw.com. Give us a call anytime, 24-7 at 1-800-373-8000. We service the whole state of Florida. Whatever your issue may be, even if it's outside those practice areas, give us a call. We'll steer you in the right direction. We'll be right back. Thanks for being a part of this. I was driving behind a lady, and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. 
I had 280 discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melton fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. I've done mornings here on Sky Radio for 17 years. Jeffrey Meldon started doing his weekend show here 16 years ago. One of the things that separates Jeffrey is I don't see him out there hollering for people's business. I see him out there investing in the community. He's touched a lot of lives, and a lot of it he'll never know what a difference he made in somebody's life about information that he has shared on the air. Hello and welcome back to Meldon Law Talk, a service of Meldon Law, a Gainesville-based law firm with also having offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Chris Qualman. I am the chief investigator for the firm, but I'm very happy and proud to be again joined by the founder and CEO, Jeffrey Meldon, and Richard Perlini, our newest lawyer who's joined us after many years of practice in South Florida. We're going to talk about another major sponsorship of which the firm has been very involved and very proud to be involved, and that is the Tom Petty Birthday Bash. And Jeffrey, you've got a lot of history with Tom Petty. You were his first attorney. Some people know that, a lot of people don't. You were Tom Petty's first attorney back in the early 70s before he even had the Heartbreakers and released his first album. But to bring that forward for the last three years, starting in 2018, Melvin Law has been the law firm official sponsor of the Tom Petty Birthday Bash. So maybe say a few words about how that came to be. Well, I've been a Tom Petty fan ever since I uh, worked with him. Even before I was an attorney, uh, he was in a group called Mud Crutch. Sure. And, uh, the, and we were doing uh, musical events around Gainesville. I was waiting to take the Florida bar and become a lawyer and all of that, and I got to be good friends with Tom Petty and uh, the rest of the guys in Mud Crutch. And they the legendary Mud Crutch Farm, I think that's what it was called, right? Yes, I was actually um, very involved in creating the Mud Crutch Festivals, which wow. uh, the first one was in uh, December of 1970, and then February of 1971, we had the second longer version, which was a three-day festival. Okay. And it was the closest thing to Woodstock Gainesville ever had. It's really amazing, you know, the, the musical history in Gainesville, but certainly Tom Petty, first and foremost, is what people think of when they think about uh, music in Gainesville. But say a few more words about those early days. So Tom was just this young guy right out of Gainesville High School. You were this young, ready to be an attorney. You guys became friends. What happened next? Well, you know, I opened up my law practice, and uh, I, I kind of, had a little bit of background in music because my father That's owned right. the uh, largest jazz nightclub between New York and Chicago when I was a kid in uh, the 1950s. Jazz was huge. It was bigger than rock and roll because rock and roll wasn't here yet. Sure. And so uh, anyhow, I, I grew up uh, around uh, a lot of jazz greats uh, like, you know, Gene Krupa and Count Basie and uh, Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker, and these were household names in our in our home. So I, I enjoyed music. I, when I went off to uh, college, I was uh, the Rush chairman and social chairman, so I, had, <laughs> I always had uh, the opportunity to put on uh, musical uh, Sure, and that's why you and I get along so well. I did the same thing in college. I booked concerts. <laughs> But uh, and you, you also though not just let, after you know you became a lawyer and you're representing Tom Petty helping him get gigs, you opened a major music venue. You and your buddy uh, Peter Laird and a couple of others, the Great Southern Music Hall. Well, actually, it, the story goes back to Minnie Ripperton. Minnie Ripperton was married to Dick Rudolph, and Dick Rudolph okay. lived next to my aunt Pearl in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. Aunt Pearl. That was her yeah. real name, Aunt Pearl. My mother. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My, so, so when uh, Dick and Minnie moved to Gainesville in 1972, they, uh, we immediately got together and uh, be, we became really good friends. And uh, their daughter, Maya Rudolph, who's a famous uh, movie actress and on Saturday Night Live. She, she was on two nights ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's Kamala Harris now, okay, yeah. in the Saturday Night Live skits. But anyhow, so um, 
We worked on putting together a music venue in Gainesville, and uh, we looked at the old Cotton Club, which is now a restored museum. Oh, it's beautiful. <clears throat> but it was in such bad shape that uh, we didn't think that it would work. They uh, they recorded this great hit um, called Love and You, which, sure. which was about their daughter, Maya. Okay? That's right. And they went off to uh, L.A., and uh, I remember there was a guy named Larry Ellis who was with Epic Records, and that's a whole other story. But anyhow, they moved off to uh, L.A., and then uh, a couple of years later, they decided to close down the Florida Theater, and they had heard that I was interested in starting a music venue. So they, they approached me and said, would you be interested in taking over the Florida Theater? Mm. I got together with... Uh, Another uh, promoter in town, uh, Jim Forsman. Jim Forsman, sure. Know him well. And uh, Peter Laird was my law partner at the time, and Peter loved music. And so Peter Laird and Jim Forsman and I teamed up, and we created the greatest music venue in the history of Gainesville called okay. The Great Southern It really music. was amazing. And I know in our conference room, you've got uh, a, a huge framed poster of all the artists who played there. It's really quite amazing. I mean, from rock artists like Blue Oyster Cult, Molly Hatchet, to many, many others. The late Jerry Jeff Walker, who just passed away, I believe, played there, and so many others. Well, and Jerry Lee Lewis, and uh, sure. we had uh, Muddy Waters. And, yeah, we uh, sure did. And we had, you know, one of my favorites was Taj Mahal. Oh, I, yeah. I, I go on this blues cruise every year, and Taj Mahal is on it every year. And... Uh, when I have a picture of him in 1974 playing at our club, mm. and he was skinny as a rail, you know, mm. and so I took that picture and I made a copy of it so he could sign it. I went up to him uh, on the blues cruise a few years ago and said, Taj, would you go ahead and sign this <laughs> wow. uh, picture? And he, he looked at it mm. and he says, wow. He said, and I looked at it and said, Man, I said, you, you know, you were a lot skinnier back then. Well, and say so, the same about me. Another story for today. <laughs> so he, he turns around to me, he says, well, Jeffrey, he says, sometime a man's got to grow up. <laughs> yeah. So let's bring this full circle to the Tom Petty birthday bash. Okay, so let's move to 2018. You meet this young man, Jason Hedges, his wife, Sarah Hedges. Jason had been, was, and still is the front man for a group called Heavy Petty, a Tom Petty tribute band. Hey, we're biased, but as far as we're concerned, the best Tom Petty tribute band anywhere. A year earlier, he had done something very organically right after Tom's very tragic passing in early October 2017. They did something at the Hartwood uh, Music Facility, and then 2018, they wanted to take it to a different level, and that's when you became involved. So say a few words about where that is now. There was just an event Friday, last Friday, a week ago, and uh, say a few words about that and where it's going in the future. So uh, the Tom Petty Birthday Bash it has become a major music festival in the city of Gainesville, Florida, every year around October 20th, which is the uh, birthday for Tom Petty. And right away, Melvin Law jumped in to partner up with the founders and sponsors of it, uh, Jason and Sarah Hedges. In fact, we wound up hiring Sarah Hedges to come work at Melvin Law because she's so talented. She's so darn good, exactly, and, uh, yeah. And we have uh, really uh, been involved right from the beginning in trying to promote the legend of Tom Petty. And it's more than just um, a few music festival surrounding Tom Petty. It's about the inspiration that he had sure. for new artists and bringing up new artists and creating a, a forum for everyone to hear. I know that's something things. that's very important. That's been part of Jason's vision from the start. You know, he has these bands like uh, Low Cut Connie, Hannah Wickland, so many others, the High Divers, all these others, like you said, young up and coming bands that are inspired by the music and songwriting of Tom Petty. So what did you think about the event uh, a week ago, last Friday? Of course, it had to be a virtual event, but it was amazing. Amazing, yeah. I mean, uh, we, it, First of all, the Tom Petty Birthday Bash was a local event in uh, Gainesville, and it really didn't have the tie-in with um, all the big shots involved with the Tom Petty. There's TomPetty.com uh, and Tom Petty Nation, and then there's 
uh, red light management. Red which, light management, sure. which manages the estate of Tom Petty. And it was music. kind of like the perfect situation because after last year's event in 2019, the uh, the two daughters of Tom Petty, you know, Anna Kim and Adria, and Tom's widow Dana, got together, uh, resolved all their issues, and they hired this company, Red Light Management, to be their representative, their management company going forward. Jason and Sarah met with them, and that's really how this thing went to a whole new astronomical level. So now Jason and Sarah have the uh, blessing of the Tom Petty family sure. uh, and their management team, and now we've got <coughs> Sirius uh, Channel XM, 31, yeah. uh, the Tom Petty Channel, plus we've got um, Amazon Amazon's yeah. involved, yeah. and so it really has turned out incredibly. So Sarah... Uh, got together with Jason and put together a two and a half hour segment on XM Radio, which was phenomenal. They've been playing it. And they focused on the up and coming, the young artists. Correct. They even had that Jake Thistle. What a talent, a 16 year old young man who's, who's actually played this festival live uh, two years ago. And if you haven't listened, if you haven't seen Jake Thistle, check him out on YouTube, check him out on the internet. What an incredible young talent. So anyhow, um, we're really excited about how everything happened. You know, the the um, Amazon part, the video part, name some of the artists. It was incredible. Oh, it was uh, from the Foo Fighters to Nora Jones, Stevie Nicks made an appearance, Jacob Dylan, um, George Harrison's son, and then Olivia Harrison got up and spoke. And, it was very emotional. She talked about the deep friendship between George Harrison and Tom Petty, but then at the end, oh my gosh, I don't think there was a dry eye anywhere. You had Ben Tench, you had Mike Campbell, just the two of them performing. And uh, Ben Mott sang American Girl, Mike sang Something Good Coming, and then they did a tribute to the famous, I won't say famous, but locally famous blues man, Johnny Hines, this street musician who you remember him, I remember him. He was this guy who just walked up and down the streets of Gainesville playing blues, and Mike talked about Johnny Hines, and they kind of did a blues jam at the end. I don't know if you know this, but Johnny Hines used to uh, sleep on my porch. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised at that. <laughs> i got to toss back to our friend here who's been, who's been quiet. I, I know you didn't know you were joining this firm with all this ties to music, but uh, it's pretty pretty neat, isn't it? Oh, but I remember way back when I started law school here in 1973, and I met Jeffrey Meldon for the first time, and, and Great Southern Music Hall. Wow, what is this place? What? <laughs> And it's such a part of a history of, uh, of this town. And I, I just remember it as being so incredibly awesome. It is. You know, and you got other, I mean, some of the other people, my wife's favorite artist, John Anderson. Is, That's is, right, he's from Ohio. Yeah, I know, and Buddy Epson, Mel Tillis, so yeah. many others. You are watching Meldon Law Talk, a service of Meldon Law, your hometown Gainesville law firm, but also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale. We'll be right back, and thanks for being a part of the program. And I was in an accident. Someone ran a red light and hit me, and uh, I was hurt. You don't know where to turn. Luckily, I called Jeffrey. These big insurance companies, they don't want you to win. They truly don't. But Jeffrey and his firm and the people that work here, they just really fight for you. You call the law offices of Jeffrey Belden because you're going to need help and they will help you. I was riding as a passenger in my friend's vehicle. You know, a fellow ran a stop sign and we T-boned him. Had neck and shoulder and knee injuries and didn't know what to do and I had remember seeing one of Jeffrey's ads. So I gave him a call. He explained everything to me. I'd go see him and everything was done. Everything was taken care of. Don't waste your time with anybody else. Go see Jeffrey. Welcome back to Meldon Law Talk, a service of Meldon Law, a statewide law firm with its primary office in Gainesville and also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Chris Qualman, Chief Investigator for the law firm, joined by Jeffrey Meldon, the President and CEO, and also with Richard Perlini, who's just joined our firm. Very happy to have Richard aboard. So gentlemen, let, let's talk about some of the types of cases we handle. We've already uh, told our viewers and listeners we are a firm that specializes in personal injury law as well as criminal defense law. 
certainly one type of unique case, and it has its own issues, are big truck crashes. Cases involving 18-wheelers, commercial trucks. Truck versus a small car, it's often not a very good result for that small car, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, whenever you have a huge truck that weighs 80,000 pounds loaded, uh, getting involved in a crash, uh, it can really result in some horrible injuries, and that's something that Melden Law has focused in on as part of our practice. I imagine you've tried your fair share of big truck cases. What makes those types of cases unique? Uh, discovery, actually. Okay. And Explain find, what that means to our listeners and viewers. Well, there's a period of time after an accident occurs that we put as much information together as possible. If those aren't resolved then, and we have to file suit, then we get discovery, information from the other side. Okay. It, and it's amazing how many rules and regulations there are. And unless you really know them, you don't know the questions to ask. So we have to know that information, how many hours they're driving, what their route is, uh, were they allow, were, what kind of licenses do they have, are they long haul, short haul, there's so many rules and regulations for trucking that you really need to know them, specialize in them, and it really sure. helps in clarifying and in establishing how at fault these trucks often are in these tragic accidents. So Jeffrey, one thing I know from my role in the firm as chief investigator, when I get out to a, a big truck crash, those truck companies, they've got SWAT teams out there, literally, and I mean within 10 to 15 minutes. It's quite amazing. There, no matter the size or seriousness of the crash, they automatically, they send out a dispatch, they get investigators, engineers, even lawyers out to the scene. It, yeah. it, it's quite an arsenal that we're facing in these types of cases. Well, and, and what we try to do is to uh, counteract that by gathering the same kind of information sure. that they're trying to gather. The reason they have a SWAT team out there is because information changes. So once the scene is cleaned up, a lot of the uh, information that you could present in a case is gone. Absolutely. At, but, however, we also try to get all the downloads from the sure. black boxes. These trucks have a tremendous amount of information, particularly on the newer trucks. And it's very important for us to reconstruct the crash and to be able to show what actually happened. It's important to remember that Big truck drivers are professionals. That's right. They, they have a, a much higher standard. They have CDL licenses. They're trained. They know how to avoid accidents. And it's very important for us to be able to show what actually happened in the case because it's very, very rare that um, a big truck uh, driver gets involved in an accident and there's not a huge amount of information to reconstruct. And there's even information you can get from the victim vehicle, right? I mean, particularly if it's a newer model vehicle, the, the, a passenger vehicle will have its own black box, its own little internal computer system, so it's critical to get that information, right? Yes, photographs of the scene are so important. Witness statements right away, because the freshest time and the most accurate time is usually right after an accident or shortly after an accident, and that's why... You know, I, I enjoy working with you, Jeffrey, because we get out there right away and we get the witnesses and to the witnesses right away and to the photographs right away, and, which are critical. Right, and we actually use independent outside engineering firms. We've got several of them we work with. Uh, we've got a local gentleman that we've worked with for many years, an ex-Marine, but we've got a company out of Tallahassee. You've been telling us about a company based in South Florida. The critical thing is, though, to get to that scene and get professionals out there with the up-to-date equipment to make those downloads, right? Yeah, absolutely. And what we're trying to do is to be able to get a fair shake for our clients. Level the playing field. <laughs> Level yeah. the playing yeah, field. exactly. And, and it's really uh, kind of uh, interesting. See, I, I get passionate about some of these big truck cases because they're so complex. And exactly. what Richard was talking about, you know, going into, you know, the, the regulations and they're supposed to be professional truck drivers Listen, most truck drivers are pretty good guys and, I and pretty to make good that drivers. Point. We, okay. We've got friends of the firm. We've actually represented yeah, truck drivers yeah. without getting into the weeds of it. We had a truck versus truck case. So we're not yeah. here beating up on no, big truck all. drivers. But, but 
there is a tremendous amount of information that's available, and we try to do everything we can to give our clients a fair shake in reconstructing what happened and then being able to demonstrate what damage was caused, what injuries were caused to our clients. Sometimes even the photographs of the property damage. You can look at the, the, the dents, the, the damage, the catastrophic damage in many cases to the passenger vehicle. They tell a story in and of itself, right? Uh, it's called crush analysis, and absolutely. There are so many valuable things that you learn, and it's really important to get on it right away because the circumstances change of the scene of an accident, Trucks are hauled away, cars are hauled away, and folks aren't available sometimes. So uh, that's one of the things that I enjoy is you know getting them right on it right away. So the takeaway here is that big truck cases are a major part of what we do at Melvin Law. And if you're thinking about hiring a law firm, working with a firm, maybe you're someone in your family, maybe you know someone who's been a victim of a big truck crash, it's critical to work with a firm that truly does work on these unique cases because they're far different than just a garden variety auto versus auto case, right? Oh, absolutely. Sometimes there's other things involved as conditions of the road and any normal, amazing amount of other factors come into play. Sure. Yeah, there, a lot of people get, unfortunately, as Jeffrey pointed out, an 80,000 pound truck hits your car. It's... Uh, Often not, not a fair fight. No. It's not a fair fight. So, Jeffrey, I want to pivot because we only have a little bit of time left in this segment, but I know it's a subject you're passionate about. You talk about it on your radio program. Insurance. In particular, the need to have uninsured motorist coverage. It's so, it's so sad because we see people come into our office every week who are victims of terrible crashes but the other driver doesn't have bodily injury coverage. So why don't you say a, quick, a few words about that? The state of Florida is one of only two out of the 50 states that does not have mandatory insurance for bodily injury liability. What does that mean? If you're injured due to the carelessness of another person, it's likely the other person isn't going to have insurance. What should you do? Buy uninsured motorist coverage. This coverage protects you and your family, whether you're in your own car, someone else's car, even if you're a pedestrian on a bike, in a, in a multitude of different circumstances, you are walking around with protection surrounding you, and it's very, very important. Do you remember the word uninsured motorist coverage and get as much of it as you can? Your local insurance agent is the exactly. best source. I encourage people to go to your neighborhood insurance agent rather than go online or call some 800 number because they're in the community and they'll steer you in the right direction. And you've got a book. You've written a book on this very topic, a very easy to read, quick bullet point book. In fact, if you don't even want to read the whole book, you can go to the last page. It's got great information about what to ask your agent in terms of how to buy auto insurance, right? Yeah, absolutely. We try to keep it simple. Uh, we know everybody's uh, not an expert in insurance, so we summarize it on one page. It's free. It's called Buying Florida Auto Insurance. And uh, uh, anytime uh, you want a copy of it, you just go to uh, meldenlaw.com or give us a call at the office. Sure. You, you can download it for free. You can go on meldenlaw.com. You can get an electronic free download. Or if you're old school like me and you like to have that book in your hand, uh, you can give us a call at the office, 1-800-373-8000. We'll send you a free copy. We've got other books, too. We've got books that you talked about earlier in the program, The Seven Mistakes That Can Wreck Your Accident Case. That's free. We've also got books on criminal defense issues, ways that you can potentially beat a DUI charge. Carrie, your son, Ian Pickens, others have been working on those. Tanner Demery's been helping on the updates. So by all means, give us a call if you want one of our free books. We're almost out of time for this particular segment. We're going to be taking a break in just a couple of minutes to acknowledge our, our sponsors and for advertisers. Again, we want to remind you that uh, anytime you have a, call, a question, give us a call toll-free at 1-800-373-8000. We also have another way you can reach us, pound 4878 Pound hurt, right? Yeah, absolutely. From your cell phone. And uh, it's a quick and easy way to uh, reach us, particularly since uh, the earlier you get a hold of us after a crash, the more we can do to reconstruct what happened. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Thanks for being a part of the program. I was riding as a passenger in my friend's vehicle. You know, a fellow ran 
a stop sign and we T-boned him. Had neck and shoulder and knee injuries and didn't know what to do and I remember seeing one of Jeffrey's ads. So I gave him a call. He explained everything to me. I'd go see him and everything was done. Everything was taken care of. Don't waste your time with anybody else. Go see Jeffrey. The Melvin Law Firm from the beginning has been built on giving back to the community. I enjoy coming to work as much today as I did in 1971 when I opened my practice. I don't look at this as a job, I look at it as serving other people. While we're alive, what better feeling can you achieve than knowing that you've helped other people and thereby you enrich your own life? Hello and welcome back again to Melden Law Talk, a service of Melden Law, your hometown Gainesville, Florida law firm, but also with offices in Ocala and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Chris Qualman, chief investigator for the firm and one of the hosts of this program. We've only got a couple of minutes left. I want to remind you of a couple of things. This is the first podcast of this show. So whether you are watching us on video or whether you are listening on one of many platforms, this is our first program. We will be back again each and every Friday hereafter. Next Friday is November 6, 2020. We'll have some great guests. Don't know who they are yet, but I promise you they'll be good. I want to again thank Richard, you know, who has recently joined the firm. Richard, anything you'd like to say in closing? It's so great to be back here in Central Florida and Gainesville and Ocala and great to be part of the Gator Nation Law Firm. How about you, champ? Well, this is really exciting. You know, we've been doing uh, Law Talk Live sure. uh, on the sky for yeah. eight, 18 years, since uh, 2002, and moving into the podcast format is really exciting for us, you know. It, it is. I know we've been talking with about this for a long time. You keep saying to me, "Hey, Chris, this week we're going to do the podcast. It's been going on for a few months, but hey, we're finally doing it." And it's really, you know, we've got more time. We can stretch a little bit, and I think it's going to be an amazing thing. Yeah, and I'm really proud again to uh, be part of the Gator Nation. That uh, having the University of Florida reach out to us and uh, ask us to be. Uh, the only official law firm partner of the Florida Gators is a huge honor, and uh, we respect it. We intend to uh, do our part and give back to the community in every way we can. I want to thank Richard again for joining us. You know, he said to me beforehand, hey, I haven't done this before, but you've done a terrific job. I think you'd have to agree. Well, thank you. But I know we're most thrilled about the fact that you bring so much experience, so much knowledge to our litigation department. And like Jeffrey said earlier, we try to settle cases pre-suit, but when we have to go to court, we now we, we've got a lot more ammunition. So I know on a personal level, I'm very thrilled to have you part of the team. And I look forward to meeting everyone out there. Again, please call us if you've been injured in any accident. 1-800-373-8000, toll-free number from anywhere, or take a look at our website, www.meldenlaw.com. Thank you again for watching and being a part of this and listening. You, you want to say something? Yeah. How do we wrap up every show, Chris? Uh, we we got to do it. We got a game <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. One, One, two, two three. three. Go. 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 Go.